Hello, everybody. I'm Brian. And I'm Brian. And this is Brian versus Brian, uh, episode 93. 93. Getting towards 100. We're getting there. Um, yeah. Rescue Rangers. That's the title of it, right? It's just Rescue Rangers, I believe. Yes. Uh, Chip oh, it's Rescue actually Rangers. Chip and Dale yeah. Rescue Rangers. I thought yeah. it was just Rescue Rangers. All right. Uh, came out. Yeah, da, 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 da. Most Friday. reboots would do the Rescue Rangers. They would get rid of the, yeah. <laughs> the Chip and Dale. Andy Samberg, John Mulaney, directed by Akiva Schaefer uh, from Lonely Island, also helped produced by the Lonely Island guys, which, of course, Samberg is a part of. Um, written by Dan Greger and Doug Mann. I don't know who they are, but they did a pretty good job. Uh, starring, uh, like we said, John Mulaney, Andy Samberg, Will Arnett. I don't remember who was Will Arnett. He was Sweet uh, Pea. Sweet Sweet Pete? Or oh, it was a sweet Pete. Oh, okay, <laughs> I thought he said yeah. sweet Pete the whole time. <laughs> yeah, sweet Pete. Okay, I didn't even hear his voice in there. Weird. Uh, Eric Bana, Keegan Michael Key. I don't remember who the hell was Key. Like all these people at the end, they were showing their names. I was like, what? Oh, he uh, he was the frog coworker that had one line of dialogue, which was actually pretty funny. But <laughs> yeah, I was like, it could have been anybody. Yeah, it's just a taste of what you get with me outside of work. <laughs> it's so good. Seth Rogen, of course, was in there. That was pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, J.K. Simmons had a pretty big part. I liked him in it. Yeah. It's the Clay uh, Captain, Police Captain. Captain Putty. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Um, uh, this is a little ridiculous, right? They were, they were friends in the 80s and made a show in L.A., and now they're, uh, the show got canceled because Dale started a pilot on another show, so they canceled his Chip and Dale show, and the pilot never took off. And then uh, cartoons start getting kidnapped later. One of them happens to be his friend from the show. What the heck was that guy's name? Oh, Bushwhack uh, or something? I don't Monterey know. Monterey Jack is the cheese. Monterey Jack. Yeah, the cheese guy. <laughs> oh, man. So this movie, first of all, was fucking awesome. It was like, it was just super not what I expected. And all this time with people trying to do this, this one actually worked. I mean, it's not amazing, but it was good. The whole way through, I enjoyed everything about it. I enjoyed all the cameos. This is like what Space Jam tried to do, but completely failed. Uh, <laughs> yes. And the animation with live action was fucking good. Like there's some animation in this stuff that just looks amazing. And then they mix in CG characters, drawn characters, clay characters, puppets. And it all looks fucking awesome. Like, one of the best parts was the fucking puppet cheese dealer. Yeah. That was one of my favorites, dude. He's like, <laughs> hey, we got the Gorgonzola. You got any stinky <laughs> cheese? And then it just zooms in on him real tight in that eyebrow. Just, Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys cops? <laughs> That was uh, yeah, they got funny. everything. Yeah, like you said, the CG the animated. I think I saw a sock puppet at one point at the crime yeah, it was scene. Yeah, sock puppet. Um, <laughs> yeah, they kind of they run the gambit. It's and it works really well. It reminds me of um, obviously. I'm assuming it's a huge inspiration. It, it can't be a coincidence, but like Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah. Um, also, uh, and a he's little in bit it. Of, yeah, a little and bit. A, a little bit of Last Action Hero. I think a little bit of that as well. Because there's, I think there's yeah. scenes in that movie where there's animation with live action too. Um, yeah, it's really well done. Yeah, and there's some just... All the references are so funny, man. They go to, like... Uh, they're, they gotta try... They gotta find Monterey Jack because he's gonna get a bootleg. That's a pretty funny uh, idea where they take tunes and alter them enough to get around copyright and make shitty movies with the tunes. Like, the, the little fish girl is the little mermaid and stuff like that yeah the plot of this movie is my favorite thing about it i love the plot of this movie the <laughs> flounder i just love the scene of the flounder sitting on the couch oh no <laughs> i'm gonna be this fork so yeah good. i got a thing i'm a bob <laughs> um and they gotta find him and uh yeah it's just the 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 journey they go on i wasn't too happy with uh john mulaney I mean, he's mm. just so John Mulaney to me. Yeah. And his voice is just so... But I mean, but it works for this because it's just the straight man character, Chip. You don't have to go too nuts. But I thought uh, um, Andy Samberg was great. 
Yeah. It was he a was pretty, fun. pretty damn good Dale. And uh, he's doing that. Oh, man. He's doing the Comic Cons and stuff. And there's all the characters. Don't you think it'd be more popular if you did that with Chip? <laughs> oh, I didn't even think about that. I mean, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one of the be- best co- cameos in it is that ugly blue Sonic. Yeah. I thought was fucking amazing. So he, he, I saw this article like, ugly blue Sonic finally got in a film. <laughs> and it's like, oh, it was really good. Ugly Sonic. <laughs> and then he, oh, yeah. And then I love how he like, zooms in on his uh, uh, <laughs> human teeth and he just gets lost in it and shit. <laughs> I forgot about that. It happens to Chip. It comes back and it happens to yeah. Chip too. Oh yeah. god, it's so good. And then uh, at the end when he's like uh... oh yeah, when he's like ow, ow, stupid human teeth. I think I bit my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> like, I told you I had a show. <laughs> <laughs> Working for the FBI. It's called Ugly Sonic uglier crimes really <laughs> was that so unbelievable that i would have a television show yeah no oh man yeah it was so unexpected and, and well deserved it was it was fucking hilarious i imagine <laughs> I, I think that's that won't be the last time we see ugly sonic okay. I, I assume, <laughs> yeah. so he'll show up in oh, another god. something oh god and then uh i don't think it was voiced by the guy who did sonic though no, it's actually another, I guess, uh, a fucking PSA, but the guy who voices him, his name is uh, Tim Robinson, and he has probably the funniest show on Netflix. It's a sketch comedy show. They're only like 20 minutes long, but they're all like sketch comedy, and it's fucking hilarious. It's called uh, mm. I Think You Should Leave, but um, yeah, he does the voice. He's a really funny guy. Yeah. It almost would have been pretty good if they could get the, the real Sonic guy. Yeah. You know, he was that voice, too. Oh, wasn't um, that? I, didn't, I haven't seen the Sonic movies, but is Sonic uh, Cyclops from X Men? No, oh, he's just in it. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, he's the, like the main human character. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, he's like the buddy. Got to have the human entry point. <laughs> um, but yeah, when they go on the journey and they like go to the seedy part of town, this doesn't look too bad. This is actually pretty nice. <laughs> like, no, it's not. <laughs> this guy. Sells body parts. And, hey, yeah. Bonjour! <laughs> <laughs> I sell on my fur when I'm uh, in a rough spot. <clears> oh, <throat> uh, that was awesome, dude. And then the other part where they go to the some other part of town is like, there's something off about this. <laughs> it's like, you remember in the early 2000s when they're doing that oh, CG yeah. that looked real but it wasn't quite right? Oh, yeah, because they, they, they're in Uncanny Valley. Uncanny Valley, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Seth, <laughs> Seth Rogen shows up and he's going, Hello. Uh, <laughs> He's just staring off. Uh, hi. Yeah. <laughs> are you looking at us? Of course I'm looking at you. <laughs> My eyes are looking right at yours. Uh, <laughs> and then he gets on his shoulder. Okay, if you can see me, um, you know, I just love that. Seth Rogen was pretty good, and yeah, he has. I liked his character. Probably some of the fun. I, I didn't really laugh out loud a lot in this movie. But I think this movie is funny in like a clever way, yeah. like a kind of chuckle way. But um, I think the two biggest chuckle laughs for me was uh rogan they're going through the factory and um he's explaining what what the factory is which is they repurpose old toys or products that don't get sold and they repurpose them as um uh what do you call them uh porta potties porta potties yeah and um and dale makes a joke oh so you're turning toys into toy what was the joke something about turning old toys into toilets there we go yeah and then uh seth rogan and his seth rogan voice like oh it's been in front of me this whole time i never put it together and he just like his laugh but it's so fucking ridiculous yeah he does his seth rogan laugh um that's pretty funny when like the snake finds him oh yeah yeah and say, i'm not gonna rest the saddest thing when tunes rap and then they rap wow this guy's really rapped bad and then Rogan comes in. You're never gonna believe who I just met. <laughs> like he's a fan of Chippendale, and they're looking for Chippendale. And it's pretty clever that the bad guy is uh, Peter Pan. Mm-hmm. He actually grew up and uh, uh, fell on hard times. It's pretty cool of Disney to let characters like that be, you know, explore. Like usually they're pretty protective of their IPs and stuff. Like no, we're never gonna yeah. have. Peter Pan be old and fat and he's a bad guy? No. So it's cool that they're able to let some of this happen. Um, and I'm sure a lot of these characters aren't even Disney's that they're in here. 
right? Yeah, like the, the, one, of- the one thing uh, that was confusing, it's not really controversial, but I guess it can be, or it could be. I don't think it's controversial because I love the show, but uh, Randy from South Park is in it, which is a weird, yeah. that's like the most <laughs> offensive show on television when you have him in a Disney movie. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, I love it. So good. And uh, what else? Oh, yeah, the Uncanny Valley. They had the cats from Cats fighting in the, oh, in the yeah, yeah. valley. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is this place? <laughs> then oh, I was gonna bring something up. With, oh yeah, Seth Rogen. When they, one of the best gags is at the end too. When yeah. all the Seth Rogen characters, it has the mantis <laughs> and like the blob from the monsters. Yeah, I'm just coming to check it out. Me too. Uh, <laughs> and I'm all laughing at him. Uh, that was pretty good. Oh yeah, and the boar from uh, isn't he the boar from Lion King? I think. Oh yeah, they the had this yeah. actually the CG boar. The CG. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> There's some good stuff in there. Like, look at Baloo. He's down on his luck. Oh, yeah. Then, boom, he gets the Jungle Book remake, and he's back in it. <laughs> Looking uh, good in CG. Yeah, I love when, like, I think I think Chippendale runs past him at the end, and he's, like, on his phone. And he's like, oh, Chippendale. Hey, yeah, I'm glad to see you, or something like that. He goes back to the <laughs> Back together again. <laughs> and uh, I like the – there's some good, like, continuity in this that doesn't usually happen in movies like this. When Chip gets his ear turned into, like, a goofy ear – Oh, you got a goofy ear. It sticks around for a bit in the movie. Yeah, yeah. Until it's explained and taken away. Mm -hmm. Normally, in a movie like this, the next scene would be a normal ear. Yeah, his ear would be back. So they did some some continuity stuff that was pretty cool that you don't normally see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even Um, like, I agree, because even, um, so the beginning of the movie, the, 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 um, the intro of the movie, Chip and Dale are animated, and then it does like a flash forward, and Dale is CG. And I'm like, why? That makes no sense. And I was kind of like bothered by it. And then they explain it, kind of like you were saying, continuity. Like they explain why he's yeah. CG. Like he got basically a makeover. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of an interesting way to kind of get around that. Because it is true. Like some of these remakes, they're turning animated things into CG things. So I thought it was kind of clever. Yeah. And um, that part, I forgot. I knew that I knew I was going to, and it's not a laugh out loud movie. It's just fun. Yeah, and it's yeah. funny. And it'd be a great movie to watch with your kids, I think. Uh, I think adults and young kids could get something out of this. But uh, I knew I was going to like it when they start the movie with fucking Tenacious D. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? The Tenacious D? <laughs> Where it's like, friendship is rare. <laughs> and they edit one of the lines I remember here. Of, hey. <laughs> yeah. I think it says hand me that shotgun, buddy. And I don't remember what it says in this. It doesn't say that. That's for sure. <laughs> but I remember the, it has the next line. And also that chair. <laughs> now you're fighting a bear. I was like, dude, that's awesome. You never hear Tenacious D in a movie. Especially a fucking animated Chip and yeah. Dale movie. Right. Uh, them being a part of Lonely Island, I'm sure they have a lot of respect for comedy music. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm sure they pushed the envelope as far as they could, as far as Disney would allow them, and uh, it works. I don't know what this was rated. Is it rated because it's on Disney? Uh, I don't see anything about a rating. Yeah, I was speaking of that. This is kind of a sidebar. I was confused a little bit because I haven't been a subscriber since the first episode of Boba Fett, which I think was January. Um, I canceled it like right after I watched episode one of of (laughs) Boba Fett, and so I re-upped it this morning. Star Wars episode one. (laughs) <laughs> I canceled Fuck Disney. It. You made this. Uh, he thought Disney made episode one. <laughs> oh god, no episode one of Boba Fett. But um, and so I I re up this morning to watch this, and when I when I resubscribed, they gave me like a warning screen, and it was like, hey, oh yeah, yeah. By the way, yeah, yeah. TVMA restricted content. Do you want to create a password? I'm like, oh, interesting. I know they own 20th Century Fox. <laughs> So they're gonna have like Alien and Aliens and Predator and like the, all the rated R yeah, stuff. Yeah, now That's they're like... having a. They have you confirm that you're over eighteen on your profile, and you can set up a password so you can get it. And mm-hmm. then then you get rated R stuff. So I, I think it happened when they got um, they started putting on Daredevil and stuff. Uh, so they have the Netflix hardcore stuff, and like I guess they're gonna do some more adult content. Gotcha. Um, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, I was just confused because when I got on the they... splash screen, I was like looking for R-rated stuff and I couldn't find anything. I was like, why would why give me the thing yeah. if there's no R-rated stuff? I think R-rated mostly content? it was just because the Daredevil, the Netflix so far, but oh, they said gotcha. they they did that so they could have rated R content on there. Gotcha. And still, I get fucking 
pillaged by the Disney community. <laughs> right, come on. Put that soccer in the moms. Disney vault where it belongs. Uh, I saw them. They kissed their pussies. <laughs> it's disgusting. Uh, get in the van. We're driving to Disney right now. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, this movie was fun, man. Um, J.K. Simmons as Clay, Captain Clay, was pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. And he's always, like, running into stuff. Is there something on my back? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gum. That's just going to be a part of me forever now. Uh, and it looked good. Like, it was, like, real clay. Yeah. Like, And he had a fight scene with the, the, the lady cop was helping him. And that was cool. And the, there's some funny stuff. Like, the lady cop, they start to think that she's working for the bad guys. Because she's like, it says here, Chippendales never aired where you grew up. <laughs> And she's like, oh, my grandma taped it for me. Like, really? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then later on, he's like, I knew your grandma couldn't tape it for you. Old people never know electronics. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty but good. It ended up that she did get taped. And then when she gets captured, she tries to give a, a, a clue to, to Dale by saying, my favorite episode was episode one, or, you know, whatever, 49. And then on the phone, he's like, why'd you say that, Chip? And like, Dale will know it's a secret. It's a inside thing about the episode. Oh, he'll get us. It's like Chip is like he can't remember his own phone number. He's not going to know that. And then uh, he watches the episode because his ego is crazy. He's like, you know, this isn't a great episode. It's good. I don't know about favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like watching it, and then he starts to put things together. He's like, wait a minute. And it's the episode just kind of relates to what they're in already. But he, the way he gets it there is ridiculous. It's like Thai food. I, she likes spicy Thai food tied up. Dale's in this episode. <laughs> She's tied up with Dale somewhere. And <laughs> they need help. Yeah, that's one of yeah. the best bits of the movie for sure. And then uh, I like it when they bring it up later. Like, yeah, because that's what happens. Like, oh, that's not at all what I got from it. I had Thai, <laughs> I had thai food in my reasoning. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, he's like, uh, he's like, oh, yeah, totally. And then Chip looks at him. He's like, that's not what you got, was it? He's like, no. I got it. I got to it in a different way. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, and you know, by the end, it's super meta. Like, now you want to do a reboot? He's like, well, maybe. I don't know. Oh, and I love the other characters coming back. The uh, Gidget. What the heck is her name? Uh, oh Gidget. yeah, I don't. Remember I never her knew name. their names as a kid either. It was just like yeah. Chip and Dale, the girl who works on stuff, the fat guy, and the bug. <laughs> it's like you didn't know their names, right? And uh, the bug was cool because they actually gave him a voice in this. Oh, hello. Oh, the pro- progressive <laughs> insurance guy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Save with all state. Uh, or all state, yeah. That's what it was all state. You're in good oh, hands. <laughs> Doesn't he say that at one point? Is something? I think he does. And I think I, I don't remember. I think he's a, you're in good hands. <clears throat> but yeah, he starts banging the little mouse. <laughs> it's like a, when they at a party, you whisper something. She's like, oh. <laughs> and then later they show, yeah, they have 72 kids. So that was pretty cool. And uh, by the end, they're talking reboot and that they're willing to do it. I, I would imagine this gets another one. Yeah, because I sure. think I think this was really good. And this was like better than anyone could have imagined it would be. I mean, no one imagined great things from as soon as you see the reboot meta you just, mine immediately goes to like Space Jam. And, right. Oh, man. Tom and Jerry. Although oh, Tom yeah, and Jerry Tom wasn't and Jerry. Tom and Jerry wasn't a meta thing, but it was still like a reboot kind of. Oh god, maybe it should have been. <laughs> <laughs> I, I imagine Tom and Jerry would have been really good if Andy Samberg and those guys worked on that. Yeah, definitely. It's like those those characters, you could easily do something cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, that was a piece of garbage, and this is actually fun and watchable. Like if you have Disney Plus, it's an exclusive thing. Watch it, man. Totally. Yeah, it does it's not the a thing. reboot. It does, it's a it, comeback. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's. Um, I like this movie quite a bit. I agree with you. I thought this movie was fun as fuck. I never would have thought to put this on, and I'm glad that I watched it. Um, and the thing about it is that they care that it's a fucking movie. They care about the characters. Like you get like yeah, they put yeah. so much care in the characters and the plot that you care. Like you care about them finding their friend Monterey Jack. You you think it's like the world they create is so fun and like it is meta. But and some like uh, there's so many movies now that are meta and self aware that it's kind of like eye rolly at this point. <clears throat> but it, this movie didn't bother me as much because of the world. They, like it just makes sense that all these references yeah. are in this world because they're all actors and it's they're in Hollywood. 
So like the references didn't really bother me in this movie. I think it actually worked really well with the the environment that they're in. But at the end of the day, man, I just I cared about the characters. I cared about the relationships. I cared about the plot, and um, that's all you can really ask for. I mean, it's they treat it like an actual movie, and it it it, it, it did really well. Yeah, you could tell because I think Andy Samberg is around our age group, and so he probably grew up with Chip and Dale, and so I imagine he's a fan to pour this much into this movie. And it really shows when you're a fan and you care about the source material, you care about the characters and it's done tastefully and, you know, and uniquely mm -hmm. and fun. And so that's really cool. Um, yeah, it was just very surprising. And it could have went the other way. Totally. And I think this could have done well in the theaters even. Yeah. I mean, this is a fun theater flick if they wanted it to be like, you know, it's not in the production value super high. Like all the animation looks Amazing, better, way better than Space Jam, mm -hmm. and that mon that movie had a ton of money thrown at it. Oh yeah, but um, yeah, just the way they it, like, there's an emotional parts in the movie. They're actually really emotional with Chip and Dale and their mm -hmm. struggle and their friendship. And uh, the end really got me when Chip was explaining to Dale when he got hit by the the ball, it was oh, like the yeah, fucking yeah. Mario ball. <laughs> <laughs> That that got me, dude. He's like, I just never wanted you to know I needed you. Mm -hmm. I was not wanting to go to school that day because I have no friends. Yeah. Oh yeah, and then they, uh, this is great. It's like you're okay. Yeah, that pog saved me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. The pogs. It's the classic set of pogs. I'm only missing one. Yeah, and it cuts to the bullet is like laying down. Ah, like, oh, my nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you broke my nose. <laughs> And I looked at the the by the end the, the bad guy Peter Pan has turned into the bad guy from Chip and Dale because of yeah. the the crap and they even has like the actual voice of that cat uh, Chip and Dale who's like the bad guy voice in like every cartoon back then you mm -hmm. know it's just like that that one actor who does everything but yeah uh, I don't know what much else to say about it um, oh yeah there, there was that moment we talked about at the end where it's like is this the part where we play the a popular pop song version of mm. the, the well-known theme, even though everyone wants to just hear the original. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> chip, 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 chip and Dale. And it's fucking Post Malone. It was a yeah. decent rendition. He had a cool thing he did with the, the chorus of it. Rescue, I don't know. Maybe, I don't remember how he sang it, but it was a little different, and it wasn't what I thought he would do. It actually made it sound like, a, I don't know, like a ballad of, <laughs> you know, yeah. saving the day type of ballad. So it was okay, but they do have the uh, the original theme in it uh, at some point. I think not a lot of it, but yeah, I think they I think they the like in incorporate it into like the the score of the movie. Like they actually like I actually love when movies do this, where like there's a really popular theme, but they don't put it in the movie, but they kind of incorporate it in different ways, and then at the end they they hit you with it. That reminds me of. Um, uh, Afterlife, Ghostbusters, they didn't play the whole theme throughout the whole movie, and then at the end, yeah. after the Ramus thing, they hit you with the theme song, and it's like, yeah, that's how you fucking do it. Hit you with the theme song. So, uh, that's about all I got on that, I think. Anything else you want to add before we wrap yeah. it up and put a score on this bad boy? Um, I would just say go watch it. Um, like, straight up. Like, if you're if you have disney um check this out i think it's it's well worth a watch it's funny in like a chuckle yeah. funny kind of way clever way um it gets you involved in the plot and the characters this was way better than i thought it was going to be i did kind of i wrote like before we even talked about doing this when it was announced i remember when it was kind of like talked about so like, oh, yeah. fucking, it just reminds me of like we already brought up like space jam tom and jerry and all this other shit yeah like, oh here's another one they're gonna butcher um but no, it was made with a, a lot of love and care in it, and it shows up in the film. And uh, yeah, so I just want to say I highly recommend yeah. it. Yeah. <clears throat> and when I saw the preview, I was thinking the same thing, but when I saw the trailer, I was like, well, this looks like it could be good. This mm -hmm. is an interesting way to do it. It looks like they care about the, the source material. It looks like they're trying to create an emotional story around Chip and Dale. I yeah. was like, this, wait a minute. Like the trailer, I was like, the trailer could have been the piece of trash and show the movie, and I just never want to watch it. But the trailer, I was like, oh, okay, now I'm interested. 
Now I want to do it. So, uh, yeah. <coughs> Big surprise. Really cool movie. Fun. And I think I, I read somewhere you don't need nostalgia to watch this, and I don't think you do. I mean, I like Chippendale. I think people in our age group, uh, mid-30s or maybe like early 40s, um, would probably enjoy this a lot from seeing this in their childhood. Yeah. But even if you don't, I, I mean, it's just, I think it's a fun ride for an adult to sit down and watch, or if you got your kids to pile around the TV and watch. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I definitely watched Chippendale as a kid, but I don't, like, I don't remember watching. Yeah, like, right? I remember more like DuckTales, Darkwing Duck. I remember um, the theme song, really. Is what yeah, yeah, exactly. I remember <laughs> the theme song and the video game. But like, even then, you know, I still got a, a lot out of it because there's more than just the Chippendale lore. There's other stuff they bring into that. That's yeah. like, oh yeah, you kind of you kind of turn into Leonardo DiCaprio meme <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, but uh, there is a lot of, and it also makes me it does that cool thing where like I don't know everything about Chippendale, but it makes me like, was that real? Like, did they actually have a spinoff show with Dale? Like another cartoon <laughs> with Dale? You know, like was that real? Like all the little yeah. things they bring up is like, oh, is that real? Is that toy real? Is that product real? So uh, yeah, it's kind of fascinating. Yeah, and uh, another one of those funny moments is, was like, I think her name was Gadget, the girl mouse who can fix stuff. But uh, they team back up with her. <clears throat> and, you know, they first see her, honey, someone's standing in the driveway cool again. <laughs> He's just like backed up against the thing. <laughs> and, uh, but the funny part was like, we built that, that blimp thing, and they go to save the day in it from the, the intro to Chippendales. And he's like, you really built this and it really flies? She's like, yeah. That's crazy. You're almost exactly the same as your character in the show. <laughs> She's like, I am, ain't I? Because <laughs> everyone else is exactly the character from the show except the two. Oh, yeah, and right. I like how they didn't even explain the voices. There's a lot of people's problem with it from the trailer was the voices. Mm. But they explain that, you know, that's a, a voice they put on to act. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and they make a, a couple references to uh, Chipmunks, too. I was always a chipmunks type of guy. That's disgusting. <laughs> How could you? <laughs> That's gross. But anyways, this uh, surprised the heck out of me. I mean, it didn't surprise the heck out of me because I, I thought from the trailer, that's why I wanted to do it. I'm like, this could be good. It still could be bad. But mm -hmm. the trailer is leading to believe that there's hope, and I didn't think there would be. And I was right. Uh, 7.3. Ah, dude, we were like <laughs> seven point <laughs> two. Uh, we are almost identical. Um, yeah, I thought this movie was great. I enjoyed the hell out of it. Nice. I thought you were actually going to go above me on Ro Rescue Rangers. I said, no, I got to change my score. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, seven point two, seven point three. <clears throat> go check it out, man. It's really fun, uh, and it's got a really good pace. It's like the whole yeah, movie. Yeah. It's like it's not boring at all. I mean, there's always something little thing going on. Uh, I love that. It's pretty rare that I see a movie nowadays that doesn't have some kind of slog in it. Mm -hmm. You know, to be good, you usually got to have a slog. It's just yeah. the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> so a pretty good movie without any slog is pretty awesome. Um, yeah, go check it out. 7.2, 7.3. We appreciate you hanging out with us. We enjoy having you here, at Brian vs. Brian. Uh, check us out on Apple Music, also on um, Spotify. And as always... Here in the flesh, in the clay, in the animation, in the 3D CGI here at YouTube. All right. We love you. We enjoy you. We hope to see you again. Please subscribe and come hang out with us every Sunday. Till the next piece. We're telling you peace. Peace. <laughs>